So someone I worked with sends me amazing videos from around the interwebs all the time. And the other day she sent me one of yours. And first of all, I want to like, uh, thank you for it. Cause it, you tied in like, you know, in the speedy, crazy age of social media, you tied in like 18 different issues in however long that reel was. So, uh, I think I watched the one about kind of toxic masculinity and homophobia and veganism and kind of, uh, holding taste over any other kind of value uh like consent um so maybe if you know the video or or just in your own heart and mind do you mind sharing with elephant uh readers um or viewers uh kind of what your message was there so my message basically was i was trying to combat the argument you know sometimes it's not often used against veganism oftentimes it's like a troll comment and that sort of thing but I genuinely do believe a lot of people believe, especially, well, particularly men, that um, like if you eat meat, that therefore you're manly or since vegans don't eat meat, you know, they're not manly. But the thing is, when you actually think of what, um, you know, what manliness purports to be, and I think manliness is kind of a, a not such a good term. I think a lot of people, you know, conflate it with masculinity. But then if you're saying that manliness is masculinity, then you'd be calling a lot of people who are masculine manly who don't desire to you know be like a man or anything like that so um you know the issue is not only do i think that it is not you know masculine per se to you know support um what i consider the animal holocaust i don't know how you guys talk about uh animal agriculture and such but i took a, i take a very you know score uh, scorched earth approach to it um because you know here's the thing when you're talking about masculinity a lot of the times people say that the aspect aspects of it is like courage and you know um self control and that sort of thing but yeah. you know when you're eating meat and that sort of thing you're really just taking your sensory pleasure over another animal's life and that sort of thing unless yeah. you do think that it is necessary for your health or whatever and in which case like i said you know the science is against that so you're basically the equivalent of a flat earther if you think that yeah. so that was basically my whole uh spiel about that yeah i mean it's powerful stuff i i think we i definitely if if you want to talk about science or or some sort of um you know facts uh is certainly an animal holocaust every single day uh it's also a planetary and human holocaust in the sense that we're you know, it's a significant tr contributor, all the suffering and death to heating our planet, which is our only home. Um, I read a kind of moving thing about William Shatner, you know, who, Mr. Star Trek, who went up in the, whatever it was called, Blue Ocean or something, that Bezos of Amazon, I'm not a big fan of him, went up in the spaceship and Shatner had this moment of looking back at the earth and feeling the cold void of space. And he was like, we really need to take care of Earth. It is so loving and so warm and so miraculous, even from a scientific perspective, ecosystem. It's just fascinating. And we're cooking it largely because, you know, a lot of us insecure macho men need to, it's just such a weird thing that we think is manly too. I'm always like, I'm vegan and there's nothing manly about going to the grocery store. There's nothing manly about I mean, going to the grocery store, getting saran wrapped or plastic wrapped meat, nothing is tough about that. And even hunting and murdering, that's not tough. You're squeezing a trigger. It's not like a, you're wrestling in the mud, generally. Right. So, and even if you were, it, it's such a weird, like you said, it's such a weird concept, manliness. Manliness should be ideally about love, protection, being grounded, maybe, I don't know, resilient. Yeah, absolutely. Because like, when you take anyone who is purported to be, you know, so masculine, like, let's say, like, Dwayne The Rock Johnson or something, and then you say, okay, well, he's so masculine, but then you say, okay, well, he's actually a child molester or something, everyone would then abandon the notion that he is masculine, because mm -hmm. I think masculinity is inher inherently tied to virtue mm -hmm. and morality. Mm -hmm. So then once you're, you know, logically consistent about it, and you say, okay, well, what's the difference between animals and humans that justifies literally brutally holocausting one and not the other, then you realize there's not a significant difference. And, you know, it's terrible to do it to animals as well. And so your point, 
So your point is that like manliness needs to, is actually inherently tied to some sense of ethics or protection. And when you violate that, that should not be considered. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But like I said, I, I would rather use the like word like masculinity than manliness, but yeah. 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 And manliness, um, you know, I interviewed Liz Plank, a feminist author. She wrote a book about kind of sort of the good side of, of masculinity and and by virtue of that she she had to write about toxic masculinity and she she had a you know a big part of her thesis was this whole john wayne notion of being macho is really really bad not only for the planet for women for animals but it's also bad for men who buy into that it's you know the suicide rate is out of control the health is not good um so how did you tie all of that with the connection? I think sometimes when I or others talk about our environment, you know, it's really necessary to make it an intersectional discussion. Like how does that tie into, um, you know, vulnerable populations or homophobia? You really touched on a lot of, it was incredible work what you did. Well, thanks. But yeah. um, I think it all really goes back to, there is a sense of pleasure that I think men get, and I think we all experience at some point of just, you know, it, you can't even really explain it. I, I think, um, I haven't read that much about Nietzsche, but I think he sort of talks about this concept where it's like, you know, asserting, you know, your power over others and sort of, you know, just feeling like you're right as well and just feeling this like surge of, you know, dopamine and that sort of thing. and. Uh, you know, I think this comes, you know, a lot of the time when you're talking about like homophobia and such, I think this is particularly a problem with like conservative men because they watch these videos of like Ben Shapiro and that sort of thing. It's like, oh yeah, you smash like the, you know, libtards or whatever they say. And, you know, it, it's just this feeling that, you know, you are superior to, to others and you just get sensory pleasure from that, which yeah. goes a literal taste pleasure goes back, it's all about pleasure. I think we all fundamentally desire and go towards pleasure. And I think once you put that in like a manly or man type context, it all just comes back to them feeling like macho and that's the type of pleasure that yeah. they're at. And, and I get it, is is very, there is a like fast food style, like greasy, sugary, salty pleasure to making fun of something mm -hmm. that you haven't bothered to learn about or care about. You know, we have in our in our weak moments. It's funny I say weak because it's kind of what we consider masculine, but or or manly. But in our weaker moments, I think we've all made fun of things we don't understand. And luckily, as a kid, I had wonderful friends and mentors and great single mom and you know people who taught me to understand things and care. And I think once you care, yeah, hopefully that's the the kind of exit ramp from killing animals casually torturing them you know being homophobic and these are all different and then you mentioned white knighting tell me a bit about that i love that moment too because well, it's I, easy especially on social media everyone wants to be self-righteous and like you know dramatic so tell me about that was a humble moment I, I really appreciated that well it's because i was sort of for a while i was just going in on what i think is a problem with not inherently with men but just oftentimes the, like what we're talking about is a problem with men obviously um, but I didn't want anyone to think that I'm saying oh yeah you know women and other genders like oh yeah they're such perfect angels like obviously you know uh, you know women are less likely to not be vegan but at the end of the day they oftentimes do you know just the same amount of horrible stuff that men often do and you know the same goes for everyone else like it I didn't want anyone to think that I'm just saying, oh yeah, this is really only a problem with men. I mean, to an extent with like the, uh, I guess, toxic mas masculinity, really, yeah, that is the majority man thing, but, you know. Well, even that cuts you know, both ways because you see, sorry, I don't mean to interrupt, just okay. as a conversation, I think you see traditionally the kind of uh, patriarchy wants women to participate in that patriarchy and buy into it. And that is buying into toxic masculinity. That is a, a way of living or a, um, that anyone can buy into. And hopefully we all can wake up from. 
Yeah, and that's that's what I was talking about with like it has particularly infected women who are oftentimes looking for the approval of these men. Um, you know, and I, I think that, that really is um, true. I mean, once you look on social media and such, you see, you know, these women, whether it's like conservative women or, you know, blah, 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 who are just on social media making videos. And I think it's hard not to believe that that comes from a, just a desire to um, get the attention of these men and to sort of, you know, just say, oh, hey, I'm like you too. And, you know, that sort of thing. Definitely not all of them. I wouldn't, you know, paint, you know, with a broad brush on this, but, you know, uh, I think that is a big thing. I even saw, you know, this disgusting tweet from Nicole Arbor, and uh, she basically said, oh, man, like, I know all this, like, woke, like, new age stuff is coming at you, but don't be afraid to, like, make offensive jokes and eat, like, a slab of dead animal and stuff. And mm -hmm. it's like, so it's like women reinforcing the, like, stereotype right. of how a man should be and stuff like that. So I just wanted to make sure that that was cl made clear that there yeah. are women too. Yeah, and the other the other side of white knighting is you're not coming in like some sort of, you know, male superhero to save the women from bad guys. Like, they don't need saving. We all need some help, but yeah. Um, so I guess I'm curious about your work. Like, um, where do you get the inspiration? You know, what inspired you personally, uh, not only to be vegan, but... Um, you know, to start talking about these issues? Well, before, before I went vegan, I'd always loved animals and I would tell myself that. I think, you know, when I was like, maybe like 10 or 11, I said, okay, I'm gonna be vegetarian. Of course I wasn't, you know, within like dinner that day, like I went and ate, you know, meat and that sort of thing. But when I was 13, I was scrolling on Facebook and I just saw this, you know, disgusting uh, picture of a pig hanging upside down with their throat slit and then there was another pig in the corner cowering away and just thought wow that's just so disgusting um and you know there was text on the post and it said oh are you like and it was funny because i did scroll down to where i could only see the text and not the picture because i was like i don't want to look at yeah. that and it said uh if it's not good enough for your eyes why is it good enough for your stomach and i was like, and then i basically went vegan the next day i was sort of you know, I felt really bad about it. I, I think I ate like one last meal of animal products and then I was like, I feel terrible. Like, I just don't want to do this anymore. Yeah. And then shortly after that, I did start uh, posting YouTube videos um, where I would talk about like animal ethics and that sort of thing. I eventually got more into, you know, philosophy and that sort of thing. I would talk to people about animal rights on like Discord and, you know, places like that. Um, but then back in what what specifically inspired me to start making videos like the one you saw like these short videos um is because i always thought like they were a good idea to reach more people rather than just longer youtube videos that not a whole lot of people watch um um and i always wanted to do that but then i had you know just a health crisis where i had something called necrotizing fasciitis and you know i was just you know, sick and suffering for several months. I was in the hospital for 12 days. Then I, you know, had to get home care in my actual house. And, you know, I was inspired by the medical professionals that helped me and I wanted to be like them. And, you know, that just further inspired me to try to help sentient beings um, like I was helped. Uh, and that's also why, you know, right now, well, as my full-time job, I uh, work with disabled people. Um, but, it had also inspired me to start making these videos because, you know, you only have one chance at life and that sort of thing. So I just thought, you know, I really need to just go in on this. So in your communication, I, you know, I'm sure you get some comments or DMs, like what have you found, it, you know, a lot of um, vegans struggle with like how to talk about their passion or their love for animals or their distaste for causing torture and suffering and death and cooking the planet and then a lot on the other side a lot of people who grew up eating meat who are still eating meat and dairy um you know probably understandably you know to give them some credit get irritated or feel pressured or guilt tripped or you know what so what have you found to be the most effective way or loving way or something to communicate to get through well i mean I think that there is one true way to 
spread the message, but there are different ways of expressing that message, if that makes sense. Like, I think the message should always be the same. And I've come out very uh, harshly against, you know, what I call apologetic veganism. And that is where, you know, oh, yeah, like, we're not really going to call it a Holocaust. We're not really going to, you know, use these terms and we're going to act like it's, you know, better than it actually is, yeah. to, you know, appease people and that sort of thing. I think we should always be very clear that like, yes, you know, even if you're not going to say it's a Holocaust, you need to explain how serious, you know, yeah. this issue is and how well, I love that you brought that up earlier. You were like, I don't know how you refer to it. I, I personally, if you follow my stories or whatever on my personal account, Elephant has five accounts, Waylon Lewis, my personal account, I'm sharing those kind of pig images, the one you talked about, all the time in videos. And, and often I'll make them smaller because, you know, I want to give people, a, uh, I want people to feel like I clicked that and I want to see it. Um, but it is funny without being humorous to me that a lot of my meeting, meat eating friends will sort of unfollow or unsubscribe or, or get angry and send me a comment saying, you need to put a trigger warning on that. And you're like, this is literally something you're causing mm -hmm. by choice three times a day. Yeah. You want me to put a trigger warning on just looking at it. Like you're not even in the room with it, you know? So yeah, yeah. I, you know, I, my half, my family's Jewish and, and fought in world war two around the Holocaust. And, you know, it's, I know it's a loaded word, but we are causing suffering. We are causing torture. We are causing obviously death. We're separating families, you know, dairy separates the veal calf and kills the, the veal calf after freezing it or, you know, overheating, like <clears throat> they're in unheated stalls without enough food or water often before they're killed. Mm -hmm. And cows are deeply loving. They're like big puppy dogs. You know, we have a, animal sanctuary here and they'll come basically cuddle with you you know they can be heavy so you got to be careful with their cuddling but mm -hmm. um yeah i mean it's just so much more fun to me like to love animals or love each other than to <laughs> hate or kill or torture and you you mentioned rape and like consent i mean you you did so much in like how long was that real 90 seconds i don't know um it was extraordinary so i really i hope you keep it up because incredible work well thanks and something that goes into you know what we were talking about like if someone does end up getting triggered about you using the word you know holocaust and that sort of thing you know something that i've done and i implore everyone else to do is just send them a link to a dominion which is a documentary from 2018 if they can watch that whole thing and then come back and still be angry at you like you know yeah. they might be a lost cause at that point but I think the vast majority of people, if they watch through Dominion and then they hear you talking about that, they're like, yeah, that is absolutely true. Um, and, you know, we have to be unapologetic in this way. But, you know, showing the video footage and that sort of thing, that is really as unapologetic as it gets. You're just showing what it is. I don't think you necessarily have to, you know, in my videos, oftentimes I, I sometimes I sort of act angry and that sort of thing. And, and I am angry about it. It's not like fake or anything. Yeah. But, you know, that is, you know, partly intentional because I want people to stop and really listen. And I think some people, you know, are more receptive to the angrier talk. Some people are more receptive to, to, to the softer talk. But just because it's softer talk doesn't mean it's apologetic. It's the same message. It's just your demeanor can be different. Like, that doesn't really matter. It's just the actual message needs to be the same. Yeah, for me, it's like I don't, I don't consider myself whatever an apologetic vegan would be. But I definitely... My, my main concern is like, what got through to me? Mm -hmm. That's the question I asked and what would get through to others? And it doesn't always help to like, you know, get up their defenses because then they're just busy fighting or defending and instead of feeling. But I definitely, I share the happy, I sh you know, like the sanctuary cute stuff and I share the sad and I hear, share the heartbreak. I mean, I just share a lot of it because I guess I'm under the, impression i hope it's not an illusion that if people see and feel if they have a moment like you had with that photo of the two pigs you know it's hard not to change at a certain point yeah definitely yeah so maybe 
tell me about like the taste as, as you know um and the kind of the rape how you mentioned that um that there's some sort of sense in toxic masculinity perhaps or or manliness where you think sensory pleasure is more important than anything else yeah definitely it just goes back to you know what i'm saying everyone i think goes after sensory pleasure i think that is like our fundamental desire but um especially when it's legal or it's easy to do so i can't remember exactly the statistic but there was like a, a survey of like men and it said you know would you commit a rape if you knew that you could get away with it and the number of the men who said that they would it was like astronomically high uh wow. yeah. really that's hard to believe yeah but you know I, I need to go back to find the exact study but right. you know no, I'm not doubting you so per se, but uh, it's just unbelievable to me that honestly that anyone other than some like, you know, someone who'd fallen down a YouTube rabbit hole of, of craziness would ever say yes to something like that. Yeah. But I guess they're being honest in some way. I mean, I think that's a lot of us don't, a lot of us do make selfish and exploitative choices every single day. I mean, I only ride a bike, you know, I'm not perfect by any means, but I am trying, you know, I consider like, cooking the planet to be not a great thing um so you know hopefully like what we try to do at elephant is inspire people around the stuff and you can inspire people with the horrific stuff or or the sweet side of it but you know there's a great tweet that went kind of viral recently that was something like about capitalism and it was something about like you know we we have the choice to all live together and be happy and have beautiful like food and trees and yada yada and instead we decided to like destroy everything and fight each other mm -hmm. you're like well we could we could undo that choice it's not quite too late it's too late for some of it but yeah definitely yeah i think well, that yeah. it really is um like there's a philosopher called uh, hegel and he really talks about you know the evolution of man like um uh intellectually and I think something that he sort of talks about is, you know, we go from just wanting pleasure and that sort of thing uh, into a more like nuanced idea of it. Um, because, you know, what is, you know, causing the climate crisis in large part is due to hedonism. Like people want everything fast. They want all this plastic. They want, you know, meat. They want all of this sort of stuff, um, you know, but they don't realize that in the long term, what will actually preserve their pleasure what will actually give them more pleasure in the long run is to actually delay and delay and delay and just make sure that you know everything is sustainable even if you don't have pleasure immediately you know yeah. as a whole you will have a more pleasurable life well and not yeah i love what you're saying because we all know that there's a bigger pleasure and like in buddhism we say if you want to be truly happy think first of others you think of yourself as well but you think first of others and if you want to be unhappy think only of yourself and there is there is that is well known in any spiritual or religious tradition and even i i hope in atheism where you know giving and kindness and generosity and community like community is one of the six pillars of the blue zones if you know about blue zones where people by and large live to over 100 years old they exercise consistently they have organic community like they have non-stop social community so yeah, there's a bigger pleasure and it's not even delay in a bad way. It's like, yeah, you can be in a drive through surfing Instagram on your phone and getting fast food, but that may not actually be that convenient or that fun mm -hmm. versus sitting down at a table with a bunch of your friends or, or whatever it is. Yeah, definitely. I think uh, Anne Rand, who I completely disagree with her like politics and that sort of thing, but um, I have her book and her like moral system if it was a little bit more like extrapolated onto others, I would um, agree with yeah. them. And she basically said, this isn't a direct quote, but um, a, a whim is a desire where the desire doesn't know the cause because the cause of the desire is for pleasure, but the whim is like, for example, going to get fast food or, or whatever, but they don't understand that the cause is that they want pleasure and that won't actually produce that over the long term or the maximum expression of that. Well, I've done thousands of interviews. It's about time Anne Rand got quoted in one of them because, yeah, we don't we don't quote her too often because she was kind of the epitome of that, like, 
what President Obama called, like he said, he was asked about libertarianism and he said, it's a wonderful philosophy if you're 12 years old. Like it sounds really good, but then when you actually put it into practice, it's like every man for himself, you know, it basically yeah, leads clear. to some sort of like dystopian kind of reality, which is not fun. Dystopias aren't fun. Uh, well, thank you so much. Thank you for coming on. So anything else you want to get out there? Um, well, if I could just plug my stuff, that'd be good. <laughs> Please. So on Instagram, it's just uh, Vthen Bishop V. Just, you know, just the V's on the side of my names. And uh, yeah, we'll put and, in the link, all that for sure. And my YouTube channel is just my name, Ethan Bishop. And right. on there, I I post some of the same same videos I post on Instagram, but I post longer videos as well. Right now, we're more so going to really attack and destroy the anti-vegan ar uh, arguments and the anti-vegan like characters who spend all day just trying to debunk veganism online. You know, we're just gonna try to you know debunk them if they're popular enough. Because if they're not, then you're just feeding the trolls. But uh. yeah, right. Well, good for you. Is is good work. And uh, yeah, if you're ever in Boulder, Colorado come by and we'll get a vegan meal. Yeah, for sure. Awesome. Well, Ethan, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure and keep up the great work. Yeah, thanks for having me. Thank you everyone for joining. Yeah, see you guys.